Hi, I'm Rachel, back with my cat Leia, to talk about the 2009 Sammy Rohr Prize for Jewish Literature. The Sammy Rohr Prize is awarded annually by the Jewish Book Council to an emerging Jewish author. It was started in 2006 to honor its patron's love of Jewish literature. It alternates annually between awarding fiction and nonfiction. My tastes correlate a bit with the awardees and nominees, so I thought I'd honor the prize with a set of videos. I'm going to look at at least three books from every fiction cycle and give my take on them. I decided to start with 2009 because, well, I've read three of those books. So the first book I'd like to talk about is The Book of Dahlia by Elisa Albert. I read this book in September 2009, about a year after Albert made an appearance at the DC Jewish Literary Festival. The book chronicles one young woman as she is diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. Albert's motivation came from wanting to explore a cynical character who couldn't quite get with the optimistic motivational gestalt that follows most cancer patients. I actually thought about this book a lot in 2014 when reading John Green's The Fault in Our Stars, which is about teenagers with cancer and is generally more life-affirming. Dahlia has some bad rap with her family, particularly her brother Danny, who's a bit of a bully, and her mother, Marguerite, who abandoned her young children to the US and moved back to Israel. Dahlia is no picnic herself, but she's still suffering, and this book takes the time to show what that suffering means to her, the unmotivated cancer patient. I'm all for obtusely flawed characters, so I enjoyed this book. That being said, I found Albert's short stories, How This Night Is Different, to be a bit wearying after a while. They featured the same sardonic, self-absorbed protagonists over and over again. Dahlia's actually a bit similar to them, but maybe the novel gave her story a bit more time to breathe. Or maybe it's easier to feel sympathy for a cancer patient. Something this book definitely makes you think about. Anywho, my second book is The Septembers in Shiraz by Dahlia Sofer. I read it a couple of months ago for my book club, and it remains my favorite book club read. It chronicles a Jewish family fleeing Iran after the revolution of 1979, and it's actually a mirror of Sofer's real story. She's the young daughter, Shireen, who's good friends with the daughter of someone high up in the new establishment, but then she starts to realize the chasm that is between them. Her father, Isaac, has been arrested on trumped up charges of spying for Israel. Her mother, Farnaz, tries to hold down the fort at home with next to no information about her husband's condition. And Shireen's brother Parviz is an exchange student in New York City, living with some Hasidic Jews who are of a very different culture than his. It's just a riveting story on a historical level as well, to track the rapidly changing socio-political condition in Iran. Sofer also gives some background to the regime that preceded Ayatollah Khomeini's, which helps to explain why the country went the way it did, who was affected, and how. Obviously, Isaac's imprisonment, along with other dissidents, Jews and non-Jews alike, was the most harrowing storyline. They lived in squalid conditions and never knew exactly what would happen to them day to day. Torture, execution, or just fear and isolation. But Farnaz, his wife, also had to navigate a changing landscape with its different cultural values and angry young men looking for payback now in positions of power. There's something about fiction based on the author's real experience that lends a little bit of weight. A few months later, my book club was discussing Henna House by Nomi Eve, which chronicles a Yemeni Jewish family during the time of Israel's founding. A lot of my club members weren't as impressed by this book, which was total fiction, and they went back to discussing the Septembers of Shiraz. I happen to like Henna House as well, but, well, I already did say that the Septembers of Shiraz was my favorite. And finally, we have the 2009 Sammy Roar winner, a collection of short stories entitled One More Year by Sana Krasikov. I just read it this weekend, go figure. The stories chronicle Russian and Georgian immigrants to the United States after the fall of the Soviet Union. I would say they're probably the best written, very polished, and exhibiting Krasikov's degree from the Iowa Writers Workshop. The stories are all very long, and the last one probably qualifies as a novella. This gives Krasikov the time to build up the characters and themes in a meaty way. My favorite story is The Repatriates, about an immigrant to the U.S. who actually moves back to Moscow. But really, the story is about personal and professional ways that people cheat each other. Other stories deal with protagonists in iffy romantic relationships as they try to suss out their financial and political futures in the U.S. And then there's a couple of stories about how immigration and differing lives distances family members from one another. 
There isn't actually a lot of Judaism in these stories. One modern Orthodox wedding, a synagogue that sponsors a couple, and one protagonist who won't eat pork. If you're looking for more blatantly Jewish stories from a former Soviet perspective, try Laura Vapniar's There Are Jews in My House. Pretty self-explanatory. But for some deeply felt stories that ponder the problems that face immigrants, this is a good one. That's about all for now. You can find links to my Goodreads reviews below for all the works that I mentioned here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.